between the big storms. We do have the heat going in the RV and it, it is warming up at this point. Um, so it's not too bad. It's not cold. It's not terribly cold outside. And within a little while, the heat from the engine will heat the RV up. Guys, so we had another snafu with the RV and um, we're in a rental car again. And when people get upset because they're like, how can you be in a rental car that's so expensive? Or do you really need that you're in an RV? The answer is most people that are RVing full time have a tow vehicle, meaning they tow that vehicle around with them behind their RV all the time. So that when they're parked, they have something to be able to get around in. And so we just went, usually we're in the RV, we drive the RV, it's small enough, it can get where it needs to go, so it's not a big deal. But um, at this point, we're kind of toying with the idea of getting a vehicle and just continuing our journey in a vehicle that we own. The reason is, is that the RV, the electrical system, all the electrical wiring, harnesses and everything are shot. Um, and because of that, and because it's an RV, and because it's an old vehicle, it's gonna be very costly to have a fix. So about $2,100 is the estimate. They haven't even started it. We've asked the mechanics to give us a few hours to talk about it because we're so close to the places that we're headed right now, and we have so many people that we really trust that we would be staying with anyway, that it almost makes more sense just to go buy a vehicle and go stay with the people we care about. And then if, when we get to Florida, we need to rent a house or, or we might stay in Trish's travel trailer. Speaking of which, Trish, Trish is just so Trish. So when I talk about her, it's just so Trish. And I'll put a card in the, in the description below and above. Um, and so she's already planning on us really staying with her, not necessarily staying in the RV. And so as far as the cost, and the gas mileage on the RV and the fact that, you know, once a week we have something go wrong with it where we have to pull into an O'Reilly or something else and have John fix it. And um, that's okay. Like, uh, you have things go wrong on, on big brand new RVs too, except their repairs go into the like multiples of thousands very quickly. Because when you have those pullouts and all the hydraulics and something that big, things can go wrong in, in a bigger way. And so we know that $2,000 isn't a lot to have a repair on an RV, but we're... Mixed. We have mixed emotions. We love the RV. However, we do find that most of the stuff in the RV that we packed, we don't actually use it a whole lot. And if we were getting to our destination faster, we wouldn't need most of it. And so it almost just makes sense to get into our own car that if we needed to, we could resell when we got home because we didn't need another vehicle. Um, and so that's kind of what we're thinking right now is we really, really, really want to be getting to places where there's kids for the girls to play with and room to stretch our legs and to be out of, out of the cramped traveling experience right now. It's, it's had, it's a great experience, uh, but we don't stop places very often. Our RV's not big enough for the kids to really get out and play in the RV, so they have to be outside and in the cold weather. Uh, it's just a little too hard for them. Um, I know a lot of nomadic RV livers, most of them are seniors and don't have children with them. And for those that I know of that do have children, they just have a little bit more space than we do. And so um, that's kind of where we're sitting right now. But the instant the snuffle is mentioned and it's source identified as bear, all those other worries are blasted right out of the box by the sudden inflation of the snuffle worry. <laughs> War, poverty, pestilence, why? They couldn't be shoehorned back into the worry box. It's packed so tightly with snuffle. As the most, as with most of my worries, the snuffle turned out to be nothing of consequence. The problem with major worry, though, is sometimes it can produce the... When you are at limited battery capacity, 
and you don't want to be running a whole lot of water so limited water or limited electricity what you do is you put a whole bunch of water in your pan and then you bring it up to temperature and what it does is it actually cooks the food off the pan with about a third a cup of water the propane is not connected to the electricity it's the one thing in here that isn't is the stove and so when we have really cold weather hence when we have a little sitkaya and we're broken down um, you don't want to be wasting your battery power on anything electrical and you don't want to be wasting your water and so I'm heating my water on the stove I'm cleaning my pan with hot water okay so the guy from down the street who's supposed to be the great guy in the area is here looking at it seeing if he can fix it we sure hope so I'll have to throw the RV in a dump yard and get a car do you think so yeah, so she's our little lassoer. She watched RJ over at Straw Family Farms lassoing his his steers, and she has just been enthralled with that. She created her own little lassos out of pipe cleaners. So and thanks, I RJ. Got the mom <laughs> and dad in already. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Go ahead, honey. And, and I just have my calculators pull them in. Because they don't have, I don't have any horses, so I just have my cow, my cow, uh, critters stand on foot, and, and or they could ride a cow while they didn't do it. Oh, where are the horses? There we go. And I hold on to the head, and I move the cow critter up and down. That way it tightens. It's pretty brilliant. Okay, so my hot water's Don't boiling. Let it out. Don't let the out. The Daddy's there, honey. Daddy's there. Okay, so. So that required no electricity. So, there we go. And I did get another bowl, which was really exciting to use as rinse because previously I was just rinsing into the wash water. But this is a little easier. So I'm going to show you guys, let's see, I'll turn that off and see how bad the light gets. So this is my I don't care day. You can see I haven't brushed my hair yet. I'm just trying to keep really positive today about everything. We've turned on Christmas music. We're taking things really slow. We're trying to keep Kaya warm. And this is what RV living looks like when you're just trying to be really positive. Hey, sicko. Hi. So, this is our second leg, I guess third now, of being in a rental car. And this time I'm taking about half the stuff. I realize just what I really need and what I really don't need and how much having like a bulky mess in the car makes a difference. The nice thing is, is that with a sicko, I will now have reliable heat source. Um, so we won't be going up and down in temperatures as much. Um, and we found some hotels local in the area that are as inexpensive as an RV park. Um, oh, there's a fly on your hat. There's a fly on my hat. Made a so we're leaving the RV to get worked on. John uh, at least got it up and running enough to get it to the mechanic, which was nice. We didn't have to use up any AAA miles to get it towed. Um, this time I'm taking two sets of clothes instead of three for everybody. I'm not taking any uh, pre-made grocery type stuff. I'm only taking a couple of books. And um, I think we're going to take pillows and coats because it is cold enough now that having a coat on all the time is a good, good idea. Uh, um, and I'm taking along my toys and in here I have my chapstick, I have a dog toy and, and I'll I'll I got all my cat fitters and my glasses. Well, I'll take along as my toy is going to be my doll. I painted it as a monster doll. It really looks like one. It so, does. I love your monster doll. The other thing that I'm going to take is Sylvester. Yeah, we're going to take Sylvester. But I've been in bed all day, which isn't too fun. Not too fun. We need to keep our blankets on tonight. <laughs> 